about sperm DNA fragmentation. So much of it is often mentioned. And there's been a nice review which looked into this and said, let's have a, have a review of how, what does sperm DNA fragmentation mean? Uh, it's, it's from a reasonably good uh, paper. And what if we have learned so far? And that's something which is important. Now, what we know is that the evaluation of male factor infertility is an important aspect of fertility assessment. There's no doubt about it. In almost 50% of cases, some form of male factor infertility is associated. We also know that sperm chromatin fragmentation, which is often called as sperm DNA fragmentation, assessment has been recognized as an important tool. And I think don't think there's any doubt about it in present assisted conception and in recurrent miscarriages. Now, the fragmentation occurs when single or double-stranded DNA breaks in the linker region of the sperm DNA and it's bound to protomene and thus prone to greater damage. So uh, that's the mechanism. And in fact, if you have a look at it, many tests have been available of where this sperm chromatin structure has been ascertained and looked at. And what is considered to be as the gold standard, the most sensitive is the single cell electrophoresis, which is also known as the comet test. With its, there are two variants or neutral is capable of distinguishing single or double standard DNA breaks. And in fact, this is something which is available now across the world. Now, the two of the commonest tests which are used are the sperm chromatin disbursement and the tunnel test. And what researchers found out is that the tunnel test is less subjective and capable of screening available spermatozoa. And even in cases of severe oligospermia and surgical retreat sperm. So in effect, even though this sperm DNA fragmentation appears to have an impact on embryo development and you can make a, 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 you know, a certain a plan of whether to do intrauterine insemination, its role is less implicated in ICSI and that may be because the gametes are not exposed to the reactive oxygen species and catabolized generating by decaying cells. So by, by, by passing the nature's aspect, you are to a certain extent, avoiding those sperm to be exposed to the reactive oxygen species. Also, with ICSI, sperm which has is more motile, has a good morphology, and is selected. But even then, in a fragmented DNA in sperm may affect growth with ICSI, and maybe it is. And some people do believe that it is. It is one of the main causes where sperm does not uh, allow the embryo to proceed from day three to a blastocyst stage. The American Society suggested that the relationship in pregnancy loss is still not very clear. And though some people do use it, I think the research t does not tell us whether it's linked to recurrent miscarriage and miscarriage is evident. So the, the most important question that often remains is what should be done in cases of severe DNA fragmentation? Uh, and what has been also noticed is that that sperm goes through the genital tract, the damage to sperm DNA increases. So at present, how are efforts made? Our efforts are made to identify the spermatozoa with the highest motility. And it's important that while doing all this, we don't overlook maternal age and in an oocyte aneuploidy. So what often happens is you spend so much time trying to improve the sperm that you forget that the woman is getting older. Now, in some cases, surgical retreat sperm may be uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, viable. In the meantime, I think our pursuit to look at the ideal sperm uh, continues and so as continues the search for male infertility. And I think that is where the challenge is. So the question now comes up is, do you use the sperm DNA fragmentation? And, and I'll tell you where my, I tend to use it. I tend to use it when couples have been trying for a long time with a normal sperm count. And 
the man believes that the sperm is normal and there's nothing more to be done. And in those cases, doing a sperm DNA fragmentation allows us the uh, chance to say, and gone trying naturally or doing IUI may not be useful and trying to proceed further. The second place where I, I tend to see is where we do not get blastocysts and, and we just can't find the cause, especially in women under the age of 40. And though it occurs between 3 and 5% of cases, I think it is important to uh, explore the sperm to a certain extent because the role of the sperm is quite inherently powerful in trying to convert from day 3 to day 5. So this throws a bit of light on the various different methods that are present and what they are looking at and which tests may be used in severe oligospermia, especially the tunnel test. And there are in fact, from, from what I believe, there's six different tests now on offer for sperm DNA fragmentation. 